Last night, Iran fired around 200 missiles into Israel. So far, there doesn't seem to be any deaths reported. Iran has launched a barrage of missiles at Israel in an attack. Benjamin Netanyahu labelled a major mistake as he said, it will pay. In a move anticipated by officials, nearly 200 missiles were launched on Tuesday evening, according to Israel's army radio. The attack in retaliation for Israel's campaign against the Hezbollah group in Lebanon marks a significant escalation in the Middle East conflict. Now that is a quote. Obviously, I disagree with the way that quote is framed. Um, now, this has received widespread condemnation across the West. Prime Minister Keir Starmer gave his statement. Good evening. In the last few hours, the Iranian regime has launched over 200 ballistic missiles at civilian targets in Israel. It's too soon to assess the impact fully. But I utterly condemn this attempt by the Iranian regime to harm innocent Israelis, to escalate this incredibly dangerous situation and push the region ever closer to the brink. It cannot be tolerated. We stand with Israel and we recognize her right to self-defense in the face of this aggression. Iran must stop these attacks together with its proxies like Hezbollah. Iran has menaced the Middle East for far too long. Chaos and destruction brought not just to Israel, but to the people they live amongst in Lebanon and beyond. Now, I just want to quickly offer a correction. My producers just said that there was one death, um, a Palestinian in the West Bank. Uh, they were hit by a shrapnel. Um, but looking at that video there, I mean, Keir Starmer is blaming the escalation on Iran, saying he stands by Israel in the face of aggression. It is, as Kevin pointed out earlier, it's so strange that he keeps referring to Israel's her. I think it's pretty creepy, actually. Now, following the same rhetoric, Robert Jenrick tweeted this. Tonight, we have seen a terrible and unprovoked attack against Israel by Iran, the world's chief sponsor of terrorism. There can be no more appeasement. We must stand shoulder to shoulder with Israel, our ally, just as we have with Ukraine. All the support necessary to win this war must be given to Israel so they can defeat the evil Iranian regime. That was Robert Jenrick saying the attack by Iran was unprovoked. I mean, that's quite astonishing. I mean, he and everyone else are ignoring the facts that Israel attacked Iran in April, in which no one in the West called out. Uh, Iran then responded because they have a right to defend themselves, in which it received wide condemnation. Along with that, you've got the occupation in Palestine. Israel's committed multiple terror attacks in Lebanon, plus a ground invasion. But Jenrick tweets out that Israel was the victim of an unprovoked attack. Now, Israel has vowed that they will retaliate big. Mr. Netanyahu said there is a deliberate and murderous hand behind this attack. It comes from Tehran, he continued. We will stand by the rule we established. Whoever attacks us, we will attack him. His comments came after IDF spokesman Daniel Hagari labelled the attack extensive and said there will be repercussions. We have plans. Iran has already said it will respond to any retaliation. If that isn't enough, Netanyahu has also barred the UN Secretary Antonio Gutierrez from the country. Israel's foreign minister says UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez is persona non grata in Israel and is barred from entering the country. Israel Katz says his decision is a response to Gutierrez's failure to unequivocally condemn Iran's missile attack on Israel on Tuesday. He accuses the UN chief of being anti-Israel and giving support to terrorists, rapists and murderers. Gutierrez will be remembered as a stain on the history of the UN for generations to come. Yesterday, the UN chief condemns the broadening of the Middle East conflict with escalation after escalation and called for a ceasefire. I don't think anyone can argue that Israel isn't a rogue state. Now, a few hours ago, we've confirmed that three people have been killed by Israel in a strike. Three people have been killed in an Israeli strike on Damascus Syrian state media reports. Three civilians were killed and three others were wounded in an Israeli strike in the Mezar neighbourhood of Damascus on Wednesday, Syrian state news agency Sana said, citing a military source. 
The strike targeted a residential building and caused damage to private properties nearby. Asked about reports of the strike, the Israeli military told CNN that it does not comment on foreign reports. Kevin, I mean, there are a lot of things to cover here. Um, I'll start by the claim from Generic and insinuated from Starmer that this was unprovoked. Unprovoked, totally unprovoked. Look, Israel is just a small bean. They could, they're so helpless. They're, they're surrounded by people who don't like them. I wonder why that might be the case. Jesus Christ. Lord, they haven't been doing a genocide in the Gaza Strip for the last year. Well, in fact, actually, they've been doing it for 70 years, but, you know, more intensely so in the last year. As if they haven't been uh, uh, destroying diplomatic immunity by killing um, uh, Iranian officials, by blowing up parts of, the, of their embassies. As if they haven't just launched a ground invasion against the foreign sovereign nation of Lebanon. As if they haven't been firing consistently on basically all of their neighbours. And by the way, with British uh, complicity as well, because there have been planes taking off from uh, RAF Akrotiri in, in uh, Cyprus. Uh, a British airbase. So we are literally not just passively selling weapons to the Israelis, we are actively engaged in the genocide they've been undertaking. Um, the idea that this is unprovoked is laughable to the point of, uh, I mean, just uh, disbelief. I don't know what to say to that. I, he can't possibly believe it. He must be lying because he's not actually insane. He must just be lying. That's uh, that's the only thing I can I can think of. And of course, flip the script, right? I've always said it for the last year now, compare and contrast the way in which Western media and Western politicians talk about the Russian uh, illegal aggression against Ukraine and Israel's illegal aggression against Palestine and indeed others. That's always an interesting juxtaposition. But you don't even have to go that far afield anymore. Just compare the same politician and same media outlets' response to the way in which Israel has been bombing uh, civilians and the way in which uh, Israel is now having its civilians bombed. Because for the longest time, I was told that if you have your buildings in heavily densely populated areas, you're using human shields. Hamas was using human shields. Hezbollah is using human shields because they've got their offices in like a tower block or something. Whereas apparently Mossad, having their headquarters in the middle of Tel Aviv in a high, you know, uh, uh, built up, district apparently that's not human shields that's iran wanting to kill mm. innocent uh, innocent jewish people and of course the, that juxtaposition tells you everything you need to know about this the incredible levels of uh, i suppose western chauvinism on top of the fact that there's just an enormous amount of racism they don't mind killing brown people if brown people are being murdered they're absolutely fine with that whereas the israelis are seen as white enough basically um yeah the, it's it's absolute madness um and they've discovered now, the Israelis all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, have discovered that actually shelling uh, settlements is bad. Shelling the urban areas is a bad thing that they've also been doing for the last 18 months and indeed decades before that. It's farcical. And I, I just, I, I feel like I'm losing my mind when I see the media just going along this line. They've all been constantly ignoring and using passive voice to describe how Palestinians just kind of died. Whereas now it's, Iran launches mega super holocaust on Israel. Everyone feels sorry for Israel. Mm. Ah, it's it's mm. honestly, genuinely. And, and that's the thing. I mean, obviously I was corrected, but I said no one had died. And obviously there was a Palestinian that was killed by shrapnel. But no Israeli was killed from the strike. And they're acting, that was the worst strike we've ever seen. But when hundreds of people are killed um, on two... I call it terrorist attacks in Lebanon from Israel or the up to hundreds of thousands of people, Palestinians have been killed. That's different. Yeah. It's, it's very funny how they do that. You know, I find it incredibly ironic that Hagari is calling these strikes from Iran extensive. I mean, as I said, there's no reported deaths, uh, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians, including children and babies, because Hamas killed around 700 in October. Now, there's a couple of figures there. People say it's 1,200. Uh, the latest figures I've looked into is around seven to eight hundred, just innocent people, and the rest yeah. of them are the IDF. You ask me, I don't give a rat's ass about the IDF. They're an occupying force. So whenever I look at the number, I say about seven hundred. Um, but given that within Israel, most people think Israel's response has either been proportionate or not hard enough, do you expect there to be a shift now? 
since basically what Israel was doing, they are getting some retaliation. Or do you think this will actually rally the people even further? And rather than undermining Netanyahu, this will bolster him. I mean, clearly he can no longer claim this is all about keeping Israel safe when it objectively isn't. Well, that's the that will be the interesting thing. Generally speaking, as we've seen with um, uh, Gaza, if you shell civilians, they, it does tend to get their backs up and they tend to resist more fervently. It tends to harden the hearts and minds of uh, the people that live in those areas, right? And so I I, I expect personally that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu will use this and be able to continue and mm. uh, be prime minister and avoid the uh, much deserved jail sentence uh, that he 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 would get otherwise. And that's ultimately what this is: it's one man's desire to avoid the repercussions of his own and indeed his wife's um, corruption. Uh, to the tune of hundreds of thousands of lives. It's genuinely repulsive. Um, so I think that's what will happen. But he is very unpopular. We have already seen uh, a nationwide strike, albeit relatively ineffective, but large protests and large demonstrations against him. And this might spur those on again, especially if you get repeated rounds of this, because the Iron Dome was very ineffective. As much as not many people were killed or injured, mm. when people see the illusion of protection that the Iron Dome was supposed to give them shattered, stripped away from them when, you know, nine in ten of these rockets were getting through. It was genuinely mad to think they've spent all this money, all the US taxpayers' money, on this Iron Dome system that clearly just doesn't work with modern rocketry. It isn't suitable for this kind of warfare at all. Um, they may well turn on him. They may well ask that this, you know, that this stops now because they're the ones facing repercussions. And when it's then, it's, it's, it's always easy to be pro-war when you're not the one facing the consequences. All of a sudden, you get a little taste of those consequences and a lot of pacifists emerge, you know? So we'll wait and see, I suppose. But I, I hope it has the, the, the latter of those effects. I mean, what I find quite interesting is um, I was referring to a poll, multiple polls within Israeli society that most of them support uh, the the uh, scale of the attack on Palestine. Yeah. Like I said, the, the two most favourable opinions are it's about right or not hard enough. But then you couple that with the fact that Netanyahu is very, very unpopular. So I want to kind of decipher what that unpopular unpopularity actually is. It can't be because they disagree with him on policy because seemingly mm. they don't. Yeah. But possibly they think, even though we think we should be extremely strong on Hamas and, by extension, Palestine. Maybe they do see Netanyahu as a loose cannon and maybe they think he's less safe. I wonder what you can probably decipher from this sort of gap between the, yeah. the, the popularity There's, for the policy yeah. and not the popularity for the man. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there are The vast majority of people who oppose him are themselves Zionists because obviously the vast yeah. majority of Israeli citizens, or let's say of Jewish Israeli citizens, are Zionists. Um, and so, yeah, the, the vast majority of these people are hardline Zionists themselves, who think that actually he's hurting Zionism, ultimately, uh, by uh, being ineffective or going too far too soon type type uh, thing. And, of course, his absolute lack of giving a shit about the actual hostages. Because whilst a lot of them use the bring home the hostages, or indeed sausages, as uh, one prime minister referred to them <laughs> delightfully, um, uh, the, mm. they, they use the phrase release the hostages or bring home the hostages um, as a kind of uh, propaganda tool. A lot of people actually do genuinely want that. A lot of people think that that should be the war goal, that they want those people back. And he has shown absolutely that he doesn't give a fuck about them. He has killed many of them, of course. The Israeli government have literally murdered their own people um, and have not really tried. And they could have had all of these people back if they'd agreed to any number of the deals along the route that uh, Hamas mm. and various other people have negotiated. He's not interested in any of that. And I think a lot of people see through him now. I think a lot of people realise that this is what he is. He's just a bloodthirsty, warmongering piece of shit who's doing it to cover his own ass. And they've had enough. So it's not that this is some sort of anti-Zionist uprising. This is um, a fracturing within Zionism based upon the personality of one genuinely mm. evil motherfucker. Yeah. Support independent media. Support social justice that's there on social media. Thank you. Turn left.